Hey guys, it's Cthulhu here. So I thought of a fun game I thought that we could play together. Um, the, sim the game is simple. This is my resource tab. Guess how much it's worth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my tab today with you. It's not that different from the last time I showed it to you. Uh, main uh, increase is definitely in, in the amount of dragon bones I have and the amount of blue dragon hides I have because I've got two of those tasks and I've been picking up other people's bones and hides as well. So I've got tons of those. Lots of steels as you've been seeing as well. Um, plenty of new uh, dragon plates and, and skirts as well too. Um, so yeah, it, it, but still it's not vastly different from what it was before. Uh, but that's that's irrelevant. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you the tab today. Then in the next vlog, I'm going to show you how much it's worth. And I'm also going to announce the person that came closest to guessing how much the entire uh, tab is worth. Now, I, I know that there are going to be a couple of really, really sad people that, that would actually consider calculating it properly. So they'd be like, you know, mm, let's let's find out what 437 rune bolts are worth and, and then add that up to whatever 450 onyx bolts are worth, etc. There might be people like that. If if you are like that, then come on, don't waste your time doing that. Just just have a fun guess. Have a fun, uh, intelligent guess and, uh, and that's it. Don't actually go work it out because that would just be a huge waste of your time uh, and I think everyone would pity that. Um... But yeah, so there are a couple of rules. Uh, firstly, when I do calculate how much this tab is worth, I'll be using all but one. So, for example, the QBD heads, um, I would calculate calculate those with uh, with an ALK value. However, because there's only one of them, I won't be calculating it at all. Uh, in terms of dragon meds, I'll be calculating three of them: one dragon plate leg, three uh, plate skirts, ten dragon boots, nine dragon daggers. So, all but one will be calculated in the total value. Um, and yeah, and so that means that some items like the QBD heads, but also like the Archer Helm, like the Split Buck Body, uh, like the Regen Bracelet, those won't be counted in the total at all. So, uh, so yeah, remember that everything is being calculated except for one of each item. And if there is only one of that item, then it's not calculated at all. Uh, second thing, the, uh, obviously the seeds and the, uh, and the rings that are within these nests will not be counted. However, the crush nests that they, that they do represent for later on will be counted. So when you're thinking of the value of crush nests, don't just think 354, also add 85 and 175 crush nests to that total as well. Um, and I think that's everything then. So, so yeah, let's, uh, so the only thing that I really need to do now is just clarify what a few items are, especially the herbs and maybe arrows. But yeah, I'll go down line by line and see if anything really needs to be told to you. I'm, I'm sure you can identify most items yourself. But firstly, shards of armadillo if you've never seen of them. So there's three of those. Um, you can tell what all of these are. These are sapphire bolt tips, emeralds and rubies. Um, then we've got bolts. So we're starting with mithril bolts. Then we have addy bolts rune bolts and onyx bolts as well and these are the only enchanted ones as well um then we've got headless arrows we've got iron arrows we've got steel arrows and we have rune arrows we have rune knives we have flax snape and then herbs so we've got rainer 102 of those 19 grimy irrets uh, 186 grimy avento um 17 grimy quorum uh, 10 grimy candentine, I think, uh, 51, oh my god, Lan lantidine, um, we've got dwarf weed here, we have toad flax, we have torstal, we have snapdragons, now this is half the original amount of snapdragons, I took away half of them because they essentially pay for the seeds that was used to make them, the other 4100 is actually in my inventory right now, I'm going to go sell those, but uh, but yeah, these do count as profits, that's why they're still in the inventory, or rather in the tab, uh, we've got wagali, we've got spirit weed, and we've got uh, toad flax, and we've got clean snapdragon as well, um, and then herbs, so we've got avento, we've got dwarf weed, We've got Raynar, we have Fellstalk, we have, oh no, those don't count, right, so hold on a second, there's going to be 15 uh, Snapdragons in my back, because that's what originally I had. So there we go, 15 Snapdragons, all the other seeds will be sold. Um, Lantadime, uh, Toad Flax, Torstal Seeds, three of those, there should be eight. Hmm... Okay, just calculate it with three, or rather just guess with there only being three. Um, pineapple seeds, palm tree seeds, a magic seed, watermelons, poison ivy berries. Right, everything else so far is self-explanatory. Uh, snake hides, 
um, Wyvern Bones and Dagonoff Bones, um, Infernal Ashes, um, Robust Glass. I think you should calculate those, yes. Uh, calculate them as flasks. Um, so, so they're ready to be made into flasks, so they should be counted as them. Um, we've got Silver Ore, Gold Ore, um, Iron, Coal, Mithril, Addy, and Rune. Uh, silver again, Mithril, Steel, Addy, and Rune. Um, we have Teak Planks, we've got Mahogany, we've got Teak. I'm going to switch those around quickly, put them in order of level. Uh, use and Magic. Um, pure Essence, we've got Earth, we've got Water, we've got Death, and we've got Fire Talismans. Um, we've got, no, those are not Sweet Corn Seeds, they are Polypore Spores, we have Griffalic Flakes, and we have a Ganodermic Flakes. We have all of these being counted as Crush Nests. Um, we have Chains, not Plate Bodies, but Chain Bodies. Uh, squares, Kites. Um, we have this, which is a Rune Longsword. Then we have the Rune 2H, uh, soon after. Three spears, 55 runite limbs. Then we've got the Addy stuff. So we've got Addy full helm, we've got Addy plate body, plate legs, kite shield, boots, uh, battle axes. Then we've got mystic road bottoms, we've got snake skin chaps. None of these four items matter because there's only one of them each. Uh, we've got split bark helmet, we've got green dehyde body, we've got royal capes, we've got feathers, we've got, um, Gorogian mushrooms. We've got a, a few battle staffs, earth and water. We have royal bolts and we have bolas and unicorn horns. So there we go, guys. Um, once again, the only reason I went through all those items for you is so that you can actually classify them. I guess the only real problem in terms of classification is the seed. So that's the only part that you should have paid attention to if you're gonna if you're gonna have a fair guess. Um, but yeah, that is, that is my resource tab. And once again, you know, leave it in the comments. Guess how much you reckon the tab is worth. And, uh, and whoever comes closest to guessing will get a shout out in the next video when I actually go ahead and calculate how much this tab is worth. So, uh, yeah. There we go, guys. Okay, guys, so just to talk about what I've been doing in the last few days, uh, there are a couple of things, but uh, firstly, and most obviously, Carnelian Rising, I tried the new quest. One thing that I always like about these new quests is that they're now voice acted, so I can actually pay attention to the dialogue without having to read. It's, it's a lazy on my part, but still, it's a, it's, you know, it's a nice feature, and, uh, and I like not having to read, ha having to read the text anymore. I'm sure there are loads of quests in the past that, uh, that I've just skipped, and then that, that could have been, you know, really enjoyable enjoyable to to actually pay attention to but I haven't paid attention because I had to read the text so uh, so yeah it's always nice and um, and in terms of the quest itself it was a, it was an average quest I didn't find it that fun in fact I, I found it damn right annoying in some areas I wasn't using a guide so it was it was annoying having to find the items and go up and down up and down all through you know all through the house in the dungeon uh, looking for these different items um so uh, that was annoying but what was mostly annoying was um was the spike trap and the two trip wires if i had known about those two things i would have you know i would have set up those up last but because i set them up pretty pretty fast um i had to go over those trip wires so many times and it just slows you down and um even though your destination, the destination you set could be, you know, ages away, miles away, um, because you were going over the tripwire, that would reset the route and you would have to, you would have to re-click and, and you were re-clicking like five or six times because even after going past the tripwire, you'd just be standing there waiting for the, uh, the butler to come as well. And, uh, and even after you were both over the tripwire, there was still a couple of seconds delay. So, uh, so I mean, I wish I'd known. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't really say the quest was annoying, but rather the way that I did it made it annoying. So, uh, so yeah, if you haven't done that quest, and, uh, and, you know, you get the opportunity to lay down the trip wire and the spikes. Make sure those are the, the two last things you can do. And you can always check if they are the two last things because you can talk to your butler and he'll tell you, um, tell you, you know, what your progress is and what you still need to do. Um, so yeah, moving on from that, I've also been playing a lot of Castle Wars lately. Um, I've been playing a few games and AFKing a few games. And the reason behind it is because, uh, I saw this video by, I think it's Castle Wars. I'm not 100% sure. 
But um, but yeah, uh, it was a video showing us that uh, that this guy had got 1,000 tricks to helmet. And I was thinking to myself, how did he manage to get so many? I was always under the assumption that they were pretty rare. In fact, I was under the assumption that you only got these pieces of armor by killing people within those mini games. Um, and the more people you killed, the higher chance you had of uh, of actually getting a piece of hybrid armor. But apparently, I've been wrong all this time. I checked RS Wiki, and it told me that uh, that it's actually based on the amount of games you win. So, uh, so the more games you win, the higher your chances of getting a hybrid piece of gear. So, um, so for example, they say that it takes roughly 60 to 80 games game wins to uh, to get a hybrid piece of armor at Castle Wars. And uh, but after you get your first piece, which is obviously therefore going to be the hardest piece to get after that one um it can take just another 10 wins to get your second piece another 10 wins to get your third piece and you can get yourself to a stage where you can get a piece of hybrid gear from castle wars once every three games so uh so no wonder you know people have a thousand tricks to helmets and uh and now that i understand that and now that i understand that it's not just based on luck but there's you know there is a tangible target there of of you having to play roughly a hundred castle wars games to get all three pieces now that that i have those kind of statistics i am more willing to try and get hybrid armor and so i'm starting with castle wars right now and also another great thing about doing this is i'm killing two birds with one stone um not so much for Castle Wars because the way I'm doing it for Castle Wars is you know I am playing these games and they do go towards my my goal of getting uh, I'm sorry my target of of meeting a requirement for the trimmed completion escape if I ever aspire to get it which right now I definitely do not um, but uh, but yeah I mean if I ever do then then that will be a hundred less games I have to play because I played them in order to get hybrid armor so kind of killing two birds with one stone there uh, but but it definitely works out that way in terms of pest control because you guys know that I want to get full voids still haven't ever had it before and uh, and yeah I have to play apparently 500 pest control games to get my first piece and a further 100 to 200 games no sorry 100 to 300 games to get my second and third piece so um so you know getting hybrid armor from pest control will also result in me getting uh void knight armor and not just one set but also you know the melee version the range version the mage version etc which you know it wasn't something I was considering I was only considering getting the one but uh but either way, I'll, I'll be able to get all three this way anyway, whether I like it or not. Um, and, you know, that way I get hybrid gear and I get void gear at the same time, and, and that's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, two birds with one stone, in, especially in terms of pest control. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a long way off that goal. Obviously, it's going to take ages and ages to, to reach this goal. But uh, you can definitely expect me to, to be showing you some of the pieces that I get in uh, in future vlogs. Um, and I'm talking about something else. Um, the last thing I really want to talk about, I was uh, well, my whole plan in June was to, you know, I was hoping they would release new auras in June and uh, and they didn't. And I was hoping that they would now release them in July and, and yet again they haven't. And it's been a bit of a surprise because I'm, I'm sure they're supposed to be five tiers. And these uh, loyalty points were released on the 28th of June a year ago now. So, you know, it, it, the year anniversary has been and gone and there's still no word for a new batch of auras. And I really felt like getting, I really felt like getting an aura, especially green fingers. And so I was, I was about to get supreme green fingers when I decided to, you know, I was just, I was just talking it through in my head and, uh, and I came to the smart decision, I think, of, of deciding to get Green Fingers, but not all the way to Supreme, just get the first tier. Um, and that way, I mean, I still get what I thought was the best part of Green Fingers, which was not having my herbs get diseased. Um, and I would only get that for, you know, 5k loyalty points, and therefore I wasn't spending an extra 100k loyalty points on what was essentially just 7% more, you know, a 7% higher chance of getting more herbs. And, um, and yeah, and that, and that didn't seem like it was worth it to me, uh, for 100k loyalty points at the time. So, uh, so I think I made the right decision, and what especially made that decision an even better one for me was when I realised that it did not prevent my herbs from getting diseased, and what actually happens is, it seems to prevent your herbs getting diseased for a single stage, but only one stage. And chances are it's only the first stage, given the fact that the aura is probably still on dur for the duration of that first stage of, of the herb's growth. So uh, so knowing that, uh, that you know, even with the aura, my, uh, my herb could get uh, diseased within the second, third or fourth stage. Um, 
has made me happy that I, I didn't go all the way to buy Supreme Green Fingers because all of a sudden, you know, this aura doesn't impress me that much anymore. And with that being said, I've also had to rethink about, you know, growing Torstals or growing Snapdragons. Right now I'm sticking with Snapdragons. I might try a sample of like 50s Torstal herbs, even though I don't think I'll make much money or I'll, I'll make a loss or something like that, but I'll, I'll still try it out. But there you go, that's for auras. I've still got 170, 127k points, and uh, and I'll use that at a later date. 